Hello, Kersimir here and this is the Nodework Ocean Foam and Bubbles tutorial. In the previous tutorial I have explained the basics of Ocean Sim and Ocean Spectrum nodes and this time we'll go one step further and learn how to add foam and bubble particles. Nodework's toolbar contains presets so you can create an ocean with the foam in one click which is a good starting point. If I move slider to frame 50 you can see the calculation speed is around 6 frames per second, which will save you lots of time. If I move the time slider, you can see that the update is instant. All the data up to frame 50 is stored and retrieved from your computer memory. At the Nodework status bar, you can see the memory consumption and the simulation range that has been stored in memory. Memory consumption can be decreased if you skip caching channels that are not currently used like travel distance, mass, cluster, acceleration, orientation, etc. Now if I want to actually create a different ocean spectrum and form for this tutorial, I will need to delete those two nodes to start from scratch. I will create a new ocean spectrum node, set resolution to 10 and height to 1.5. Directionality will be set to 1 to make waves a bit more aligned to the wind direction and chop it to 1.5 which will help generate steeper waves. Wind direction will be set to 180 so that the waves move along the negative x axis. Now we will create an ocean foam and spray node. You can see that even with default parameters there is a foam created on the wave peaks. Foam bubble and spray particles creation doesn't occur over the entire ocean surface, but just over an area that you specify. This area is called the spawn area and you can enable and disable this display from the display rollout. If I reduce the size, the foam will be created only within those new boundaries. Currently the area is linked with the ocean position, but you can use separate point helper to place the simulation area exactly where you need it and you can move it around. Now let's switch back to the ocean position and set time slider to 100. The amount value controls how many particles will be created. Increasing this value can dramatically increase the number of particles in the simulation. If I go to frame 10, increase to 2, you see there are many, many more particles. But I'll return to 0 0.5, which is just fine for this example. Minimum crest value determines where particles will be created depending on the wave crest curvature. By decreasing this value, particles will be created further away from the crest. So, so choose the value to target the crest spots as those are physically accurate locations where waves will break and the foam will be formed. This value is directly related to the ocean spectrum choppy value. And if we lower this value to zero, the foam will disappear. It is very important to remember that choppy has to be greater than zero for any form foam to form. So let's set it to 0 0.1 and you can see the foam is created again. Right now particles are generated from the surface height of zero and upwards, but I want to, li to limit this just to the highest peaks, so I'll set the height to 1.0. Now let's bring the choppy value back to uh, 1.5 and get back to our foam and spray node. The lifespan was set to 75 frames with variations of 20%, but we can clearly see that some particles are de deleted much sooner. Life and motion of all the foam, bubble and spray particles is actually controlled by the ocean sim node. This is important to remember. This is the heart of the particle simulation. Now if you look at the particles, they will follow the ocean height but also the ocean surface deformation caused by the choppy parameter. 
if I go back to the parameters, you can see that life reduce is already enabled and it has two parameters foam minimum and reduce amount. And for now, I'll disable it entirely. And if I with the time slider, you can see the foam lasts a lot longer and forms a nice patterns. However, I wanted to form a cellular look that we always see on the sea surface. We can do that with repulsive particles that will repulse neighbor foam particles in a circular way. There are several ways to generate such particles, but I like to use the plane with the size 100 by 100 with 200 by 200 segments. Then I will use the surface gen node and then place particles at the plane vertices. Distance between vertices is now around 0.5 units. Those particles will be stationary and I'll set their velocities to zero. They are uni uniformly placed and we want some randomness, so I'll set the position jittering to 0 0.5. Now we can hide those particles for display, go to the go to the ocean sim node and enable particle repulsion. Now we can see that repulsor particles have helped cellular patterns to form. The influence ra radius of each repulsor particle is controlled by its scale parameter. So if I go back to the surface gen node and set the particle size to 0.7, the structures will be smaller. We can of course add some variation and I'll return size to 1, which generates nice pattern for me. Now, if I go to frame 100, it will cache everything from frame 0 to 100 and we can see that this uh, foam is looking really nice already but let's add a little bit more realism how the fo foam uh, vanishes by adding uh, some foam reduction and boost now let's enable particle reduction and its visualization under the display choose foam reduce boost which will write colors to particles to view those colors we will need to enable display, displaying color from the Nodeworks interface. Ok, so the foam minimum parameters tells to the simulation that particle that has less neighbors than 10 to reduce its life proportionally to the reducing amount. Intest intensity of the red color tells us how strong the particle age life is going to be reduced. The higher the foam minimum parameter is, the more particles will have stronger life reduction and it's obvious that they cannot have that many neighbors in this case. I'll set this to 6 and lower the reduce amount to 2. The most isolated particles will age the fastest, but we can also add particle life boost. This option extends foam particle lifespan based, based on local particle density. This allows dense foam par pe uh, patches of particles to persist longer and overall bet better simulate co cohesive foam regions. Now set foam maximum to 9 and boost amount to 1.5. If a particle has a number of neighbors between foam minimum and 9, its lifespan will be increased proportionally. Intensity of the green color tells us how strong the particle life is going to be increased. If you look at particle colors, there is abundance of green particles, which generally tells us that life boost prevails over particle life reduction in this case. Now we have a very nice and fast foam simulation, so let's jump, jump to the rendering part before we continue to bubbles. For this tutorial I will cover Arnold renderer setup. First let me create a multi sub object material and create standard surface material 
for ocean and also one standard surface material for foam and assign this multi-sub material to the nodules. I will open our node render view so we can see the final result of our setup. I prefer to use Arnold GPU and tweak some sampling options. For when rendering water bodies like ocean lakes, we need an atmosphere because most of the colors you get is from the reflection of the sky and I'll use the physical sky and assign one to the environment. I will also enable exposure control and now I'm going to create a camera in the scene. Inside NodeWorks if I go to the ocean sim node we can see that its material ID is set to 1, which is correct. Inside the Ocean Foam Spray node, the material ID is 1, that's the default value, but we need to change it to 2, so it, it points to the foam material within the multi sub object material. Now, for Ocean Shader, we need to set the base color. To zero and I'll set the specular to 0 0.1 and keep it white. We'll set the index of refraction to 1.34 and set dielectric property to 1. Uh, Arnold uses nested dielectric property values for rendering, uh, for example, if you have ice cubes within a liquid uh, that's find within a glass and here is a good uh, content on the Arnold Dielectrics and setting it up so I suggest that you get familiar with it. Now if you go back to the Nodules Particle groups you can see that from foam bubble and spray particle rendering modes are set to render as points. If you wish to scale those points without the need to re-simulate you can change that inside Arnold Points rollout. So if I change to 2 or 3 or 5, foam particles will get bigger and bigger. Now back to the material, for foam material, I like to reduce that specular strength to 0.3. Now, now let's add some transparency to our ocean shader. I'll increase the value to 1 and we see that the surface is fully transparent and we, if we change some uh, scattering values it doesn't reflect even if we set depth to 2 which means we need to create a ground plane and I'll just use the plane object and move it below our, our ocean waves and for material a simple main material will be just fine so it's not visible inside the camera rays and I move to the frame 31. It takes probably some time to change the frame for the Arnold to update everything and I see we get something like milky surface instead of the ocean which means that the scattering is too high, transparency is probably too high so reduce those, those values to get uh, the look that you're after, especially to match the scale of the ocean waves that you do. Now that we have a transparent material, we can add bubbles that wouldn't be visible otherwise. I'll just copy the foam and spray node, disable the foam node and change the mode to bubbles. Now let me change the bubble particle group color to bluish so we can clearly distinguish from the foam particles. I'll open the Arnold render view back and I'll leave all the creation parameters the same but I'll change the depth 
where particles are created, created to 1.2. I want them to spread a little bit more towards the ocean surface, so I'm going to increase depth variation to 90%. I also want the bubble particles to last much shorter than foam particles, so I'll set their lifespan to 40 frames. I'll increase the bubble particle size to 2 and assign a new material ID. Inside the material editor, I'll just create a quick bubble material. I'll set specular to 0 and transmission to 0 0.5. Ocean surface has the electric priority of 1 and will set the electric property for, of 2 for bubbles. Now if I move the time slider, you can see how the foam is constantly created and moves dynamically with waves. To control the bu bubble simulation, we need to go back to the ocean sim node. Here you have an option to adjust the bubble's rising speed and also an, ocean, uh, an option to convert bubbles to foam particles once they reach the surface. Currently, I just want bubbles for nicer create shading and to add some uh, fullness into the uh, foam under the, the ocean surface. So I'll uncheck this option and as I don't want it to be created to foam particles. You can see that considering the wave scale, water can get some improvements. So for transmission depth, I'll set the value to 1.0, which effectively defines the depth, depth at which the transmission color is applied. Also, I want that transmission color a bit more bluish, so the foam particles get a nice tint with the depth. To add some blurring effects to those refracted rays, I'm going to increase extra reference to 0.5. This is a very, very large body of water, water so we would benefit from a little bit of scatter light. Scatter light no? So if you use too much, too much scattering, you can create something like uh, milk or muddy lake look. So make sure to use some moderate, moderate values appropriate to the scale of the simulation you're working with. Now if we turn back the foam, now we can see that everything blends perfectly. There is a third emitting option, which we won't cover in this tutorial, and is the creation of spray particles. The main difference between spray foam and bubbles is that spray particles are not under control of the ocean sim node, so they can be freely accessed within the networks just like any other ordinary particle group. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments which tutorial would you like to see next.